Welcome back. Now we're here to talk about self-confidence on motivation today. Uh, have you actually considered the fact that it's not other people that should make you confident in yourself, that you need to dig deep and find it yourself? But how do you begin? What are those pointers that we need to sort of build or boost self-confidence in ourselves? That's what we're here to talk about with Mr. Fola Daniels Adelisi, friend of the house, motivational speaker, writer, and so much more. It's great to have you back. Thank you for having me again. Mr. Fola, we mentioned earlier on the show today that uh, people's confidence has yep. been bruised, yep. uh, possibly by their own parents uh, when growing up, yep. uh, maybe in secondary school, yep. maybe even at the tertiary level, yep. OND, HND versus BSC, BA, yep. and the like. Um, how do we begin to build those blocks of self-confidence? Okay, so there are quite a number of ways to work on your self-confidence. The first and the most important thing is to note that what other people tell you is not as important as what you tell yourself. Okay. So the problem begins where, when you allow what other people tell you define what you're saying to yourself. Okay. If people say that you, you never do well, and you assimilate it and you begin to tell yourself, well, they said I can't do well, and yeah. so it means that I can't do well, it then begins to affect your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. But if people tell you you can't do well and you have made up your mind that you're going to prove them wrong, you realize that it's not going to affect your self-confidence. Well, for those who have had their egos bruised by their parents, it's a lot more difficult. It's not that easy. Some of them will need therapy. And some of them may not necessarily need it. They just need a change of environment. Okay. But for those who had it tough, they definitely need therapy to get out of that experience. And some people, a little trigger would even bring them back to that issue. So generally, anybody who has had a tough parenting experience, yeah. they would need therapy. And I recommend that they keep reading. They spend a lot of time uh, using positive affirmation okay. for themselves. So that will gradually help them out of that situation. But if it's not an issue of parenting, for some people, you just need to work on your personal hygiene True. to improve your self-confidence. Take, yeah. for example, okay. I know that when I wear something new, yeah. it's like I have new springs under my feet. Yeah. Like a new outfit. Like a new outfit. Yeah, or a new hairdo. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you see that when maybe a woman has a new stilettos, yeah. it just feels different. There's a way you bounce differently. Yeah. You come to the office, if nobody has noticed it, yeah. you keep walking around. You guys, you notice this thing now. Mm. So one of the things you can do is to work on your personal hygiene. You probably want to take your clothes to the dry cleaners yeah. who can give you some starch and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was, I remember working in an office. There's this guy, I remember till this day, we used to call him Egedun. Wow. Meaning okay. that he will starch up his clothes so well <laughs> that when he's coming, oh, his clothes, everything will stand like, ah, yeah. ah, guy, <laughs> calm down. But one thing I noticed about him was that his self-confidence was always very high. Okay. So if you work on your appearance, if you work on your oral hygiene, if you yeah. work on just looking good, looking yeah. nice, it without helps. even spending too much, it helps your uh, self-esteem. Okay. The other thing that you can work on is your knowledge. Because sometimes you get into a room and everybody is talking and it looks like they know so much and you realize, wait a minute, how come they know so much and I'm not able to say anything? So if you're not able to contribute, what you then need to begin to work on is your own knowledge. Nobody knows it all. Sure. You can begin to develop yourself in a field where they don't even know anything and begin to educate those other people such that when you mention something, they're wondering, what's he talking about? Yeah, and How they did want you know to listen. Yeah. So they want to listen to you. Yeah. So it's important to work on your knowledge. And in that case, books will help you. Sure. Self-help videos on YouTube, on other platforms, they will help you. And in the workplace, mm -hmm. there, uh, so, we so can't we can even wanted, exhaust that yeah, one. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you, you mentioned, we mentioned, we sort of bordered on bullying earlier yes, on. Yes. Um, now, the issue of people noting that someone has a little less self-confidence yeah. in himself and maybe taking advantage of, of that. that. Mm -hmm. um, when they eventually realize that, you know, they're in that kind of bullying situation mm -hmm. and they're trying to be confident mm -hmm. in themselves, mm -hmm. even though maybe something they're even telling them is making them even question their own knowledge. Yeah. You mentioned reading books, yeah. but you're questioning your own knowledge in a field. Yeah. Uh, where do you begin to get out of that? So the first thing you need to know about every bully is that the day you confront them that's the end of the bullying okay 
if, if, if anybody has tried to bully you, mm. the day you stand up to them, that's the end of it. Okay. And in the corporate world as well, somebody keeps telling you, do this, do that, do this, do that, and they're shouting at you, you just need to speak up just once. Wow. And that's the, you will notice that in most cases, it's the end of it. So it, it may take a while. You, you probably want to be sure that you have done the right thing. And what exactly is the cause of bullying in the workplace? For, for example, they tell you this person has a foreign degree. Yeah. This person just came back from London, yeah. from US, from yeah. Florida, from Canada, wherever. Mm -hmm. And they just automatically believe that they are better than you. I even had a personal experience. It was the employer telling me mm -hmm. from the first week of work, that this other guy has a master's degree from so, -so, so University in the United Kingdom. Mm. And I'm like, okay, so what has that got to do with me? Wow. Now, when it came to the time to perform mm. and to use some digital platforms to deliver for an event that we had in the office, the guy didn't know what to do. Wow, even so with the foreign degree. I came to the rescue. Mm. So from that moment, the person who had the foreign degree now started looking up to me. Okay. So that's why, that's why I said knowledge helps. Now, in the workplace, nobody can dispute results. Mm. So long as you're a performer, mm. it doesn't matter what they want to do. They will acknowledge the fact that you have the results. The fact speaks for themselves. As lawyers will say, arrest ipsa locutor. Mm. So if you are able to deliver results, yeah. your results will be a confidence booster. So what you then need to do is, what do I do in my office to deliver my KPIs, okay. to make sure that I'm hitting all my goals, I'm hitting all my target, yeah. whatever is expected of me, I'm able to deliver. Once you deliver, it boosts your self-confidence. I, I want to touch on, on this uh, workplace uh, imbalance that yeah. you mentioned. Mm. It can be an issue for confidence. Like uh, if, for instance, someone with an HND yeah. Uh, and someone with a BSc yeah. uh, probably in the same office. office yeah. And maybe one is given a higher position than the other. But it, in the end, the person with the HND might have this maybe lack of confidence yeah. based on that. Uh, despite you know, being a better performer. Exactly. Probably despite being a better yeah. performer. Yeah. Um, so what do you advise someone like that? Do? Quickly, the, the first thing I, like I said, your self-confidence should not be about what you have or okay. don't have. Okay. If you settle that with yourself, okay. you would never have problems in life because you realize that there will always be something that you don't have that someone else has. So if your self-confidence is in what you don't have, you would always have a problem. So let us first of all settle that one. Yeah. Yeah. For example, there, there will be a kind of car that you have that I don't have. There will be a kind of house that you live in that I don't live in yet. So if my self-confidence is in external or material things, mm. I'm already in trouble. Mm. But that aside, we cannot deny the fact that these things are happening. So the number one thing is that there are universities, there are institutions that help you to regularize your degree or can upgrade your degree to a BSc. Okay. I don't think you should neglect that op op option or opportunity. Look for any one of them. So upgrade your degree and you are at par with them. Okay. Particularly if you're a better, performance, a better performer yeah. or your performance is at par with that person. Sure. If your performance is at par or you're a better person, please try as much as possible, upgrade your degree. Okay. Then the other thing is take short courses. Mm. There are courses you can take online today that in three hours you're done, in four hours you're done. So if you have more certifications, more qualifications, it can be a confidence booster. But again, I always advise, make sure your confidence is in yourself, okay. not what you own. But for the purpose of qualification yeah. and promotion, yeah. take those external degrees. Okay, so I'm going to come back to what you own. Uh, we have um, a lot of Oambe parties over yeah. the weekend. Now there's a lot of clamp down on people yeah. that are spraying money, and uh, up, money up and down uh, at parties and all. But it used to be like a status symbol. Yeah. You know, wow. um, and it's... In some cases, people with no degrees yeah. that were coming out to spray, yeah. uh, people with probably not much educational background in church, yeah. um, you know, giving the biggest yeah, tithes. showing off and all that. Exactly. Um, but these people have, have boosted their confidence with maybe the finances. material things. Yeah, so again, it, it's a show of low self-esteem. Wow. If everything you own depends on how much of wealth you can flaunt, Wow. In those parties, you realize that the biggest boys are always quiet. Mm. I've seen people with a lot of money drive very small cars. Mm. I've seen people with a lot of money that you look at them, you never can tell what they own until you get to know them or go to their estate and see what they control. Sure. And years ago, I even my own dad was driving a Volkswagen Beetle. Mm. 
But his clients would laugh at him and stuff like that until the day they want to come to his house. Wow. And the first thing they see is that it's his name that is on the street. Wow. And they are shocked. They think wow. he's making a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. That's where I live. Wow. And then they come, they see his house. That so is. you should never allow what you own externally to <laughs> determine your self-esteem. If that is the case, there's a problem with your self-esteem. You should be able to stay quiet in a room mm. and allow your achievement speak for itself without you shouting. Hopefully, we've been able to give you a few pointers on building your self-confidence today. Hopefully, you've taken some notes. You've jotted some things down. Thank you so much, Mr. for coming to talk to us. Share your thoughts with us. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and let us hear them. Let's take a quick break. There's still more coming your way on WakeUpNigeria.